In today's Health Watch, a cancer drug shortage, we've been reporting on how hospitals and patients are finding it harder to get some medications because drug companies have stopped making them. Medical correspondent Dr. John LaPook now says one shortage could put thousands of children's lives at risk. We didn't choose this battle, but here we are. You know, we need to win it. When Mark Schoenfeld's eight-month-old daughter, Elena, was diagnosed with leukemia, the family was devastated, but still hopeful. They gave her a decent prognosis. I mean, the fact of the matter is it's curable. There's a lot of cancers that are not curable. So in regards to leukemia, we feel in, in a weird way lucky that it is curable. But the cure depends on a cocktail of chemotherapy drugs. And a crucial one, methotrexate, is running out. It's a wicked drug. It's pretty nasty, but it does its job. And it would be really uh, difficult not to have that for sure. Elena is being treated at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, where Dr. John Maris is chief of oncology. Children will die because they cannot get methotrexate. It is a life-saving drug in a known curative agent. Dr. Maris's hospital has only a two-month supply of the medication, which children usually take for three years. But the shortage doesn't stop there. 28 cancer drugs taken by more than half a million patients are in short supply. There are several reasons. One problem, a smaller profit margin because many of these drugs have become generic. There are now fewer suppliers. The largest manufacturer of methotrexate shut down its plant last fall. This is a real, real crisis. Unless something dramatic changes in the next few weeks, um, myself and other physicians and nurses on this very unit are going to need to look parents in the eye and say, we don't, we don't have methotrexate. We're going to do something else, but it's not as good, and I'm sorry. Yeah. That's the last thing Elena's parents want to hear. It's tough, but I think I have hope that they'll, they'll figure it out a way. The drug is known. Everyone knows how to make it. Make it. So Dr. John LePook is with us now. Um, what's the reaction, and, and are you surprised at the anger? The reaction has been absolutely outrage on the part of my colleagues, especially the oncologists. And these are, these are people, including people who are normally very staid and conservative and very calm. And they're, they're outraged because this is not a new problem. In fact, it's been known for years. Over the past five years, the number of drugs that are in short supply has tripled. And yet there is this problem for a, for a disease that has more than a 90%, about a 90% cure rate. And this is, at the end of the day, this is all about money. I think it's, it is all about money. I mean, I think at the root of this is the fact that these drugs have become generic, so there's not a big profit margin for them, okay? There's a lot, so you can't just point at one thing. There are manufacturing problems. There are problems with raw materials. There's problems in terms of, 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 of again, the, the profit margin here. But, at the, but there is a solution, okay? The solution, at least one solution, is that the FDA, it's a perfect role for them to be the orchestra, the conductor here, and say, you know something? If we just get a heads up, we can maybe try to set, you know, to predict which companies are going to be in shortage and to try to prevent it. In fact, over the last two years, they prevented more than 200 of these shortages. But the problem is there is a bill, there are three bills in Congress right now that are supposed to address this, and they have not even been brought to the floor to vote. Maybe this will bring some attention there. Mm. John, thanks.